Welcome to Sanford Lab Wastewater Treatment Plant. I'm Ken Noren. I'm the foreman for the wastewater treatment plant. And we're going to give you a, a virtual tour of how the plant works so everybody can kind of get a view and see how everything works. First, we're going to start you off as how the plant is actually set up and how the water comes up. You see this screen right here? The screen actually shows you the water level at present times, 5,834 feet below the surface. We bring it up through different levels all the way up to our reservoirs, then we bring it in through pumps, run it through filters to clean it. Then we run it through a bacterial um, to help take out more minerals and also some ammonia and other items that the bacteria will eat. Then we bring it through, do the final process through a final polishing filter that cleans it up. And then we discharge it out of the plant. As you can see, this system is completely computerized so as we walk around the plant, it's advised not to reach out, touch anything, do anything like you would want to touch because things start and stop completely by themselves. So this is our lab facility where we test. We are certified by the state to test for TSS, pH, and ammonia. This is our pH machine here. We sample for TSS and weigh it over here on a filter. And this is our machine that we actually do our samples for ammonia on. Basically we use one of these little vials. We put in our sample ingredient inside. And as you can see with some of these different colors, the different color means the amount of ammonia. This one here would be really high in ammonia. This one here would be really low in ammonia. We take these samples every day and have to have, they have to be set in um, have to be done daily on a 24-hour span out of composite water that we pull out of the sample. It has to meet certain specifications, which we have never failed one yet. And we test this on a daily basis and we send off samples once a week to outside lab to verify that we're saying what we're saying is true. Ver, this is about the start of the plant. If you look up the hill towards the telephone pole that's right between the trees, straight behind that is where we collect the water from Grizzly Gulch, which is what we call the decant water, and also the mine water is stored there. It then comes down the hill, goes through this black line that you see in front of you, goes into the building here, runs through a set of pumps, and then runs into the next building where we'll go through the start of the process of cleaning, where the filters are. While we're out here, I'd like you to point down to the bottom of the hill down here. You'll see them concrete pillars, or concrete stands there. Those concrete stands are actually reservoir underground. It holds about 20,000 gallons of water down there. Any water that seeps from around the plant, anything that's spilled on the floor, anything that's in any of the basins you see around here is collected down into that, them tanks. That water later on is reprocessed back up into the beginning of the plant up here, and we re-clean it so no water leaves this plant without being treated. This is the Yardney filter room. This is the first place that starts out taking any of the impurities out of the water, mainly the, the, the things that you physically see. If we dumped really dirty water down the creek, everybody would be upset. These here clean the water up. They take out all the dirt, all the impurities. These filters have a clean rock in the bottom, a coarse garnet here, up to this level here would be your fine garnet, and then the anthracite coal. The anthracite coal is pretty much the workhorse of this. It takes out a lot of the dirt, or I should say about 90, 90 to 99% of the dirt content, and does start to remove some heavy metals and ammonia. It all takes place in here. The water comes in through the top, goes down through the bottom, and discharges out to the red line. So the water coming in, as you notice, as you walk through this plant with us, you'll notice the pipe colors change. That shows you the, how the water is changing in color and in content and actually how it, how it looks visibly. The water comes in through the brown, goes out through the red. So it's gone through its first process. Every day, two times a day, we backwash these. And what happens during a backwash is the water will come down three of these units and then shoot up through the top. We need to have it run at least 180 gallons a minute, picking the bed up. It lifts the dirt up 
As you notice with the different structures of the media that we use, everything's a little heavier. So when it lifts it up, it actually falls back into place because of, of its weight. The actual coal at the very top almost kind of floats, but not quite. If it gets a little bit of air with it, it can pick it up and stick it out, um, lift it out. These things are on timers. They wash themselves at six o'clock in the morning and at six o'clock at night. We do this process all day long. Every day we do it, it's continuously being washed. This here is a sample point where, where the operators can actually look at the water and determine if it's how clean or how dirty it is from the backwash system. If you look in the bottom of this barrel, this is how dirty the water is coming into the plant. The backwash water would come through here and goes out into a storage tank out back and is held there temporarily while it's pumped into a different process. But then I just want to let people to make note of how dirty this water is and what you'll see in the next stage after these filters, how clean it becomes. So the water coming in is, is this dirty, goes through the filters and the clean water going out. And you'll see that in the future. We actually bring it into here. We mix in, when the pump's running, we mix in a coagulant through this line here that mixes into the ingredient, uh, into the backwash water. We actually inject 4.5 milliliters per minute of a coagulant to it that's mixed in. After the tank becomes full and it's mixed for about four minutes, then the flocculant line, which is this right here, comes in. Hot water is used to mix the flocculant in. We inject the flocculant at 180 mils into a complete tank. It is then mixed for roughly about six more minutes. And then we let it settle out for eight, uh, another 70 minutes. And then when it's all done, the clear water you would kind of see in the bottom right now will be the whole tank would be clear. And you can actually see the bottom. If you look in the very bottom of it, you can actually see the remains of the sludge that's in there. We reactivate the sludge through the process so we don't have to add as much chemical. So we use very little chemical in this process. We go through a lot less than we ever have in, in the past. And we're trying to keep it less chemical used, it means a purer, cleaner water for an end result. The water that you see in the trough here is the water that's been treated through the first filters, the Yardney filters. The turbidity of this water that you see is about a 1.5. It's not quite drinking water quality, but it, it's a lot better than what you've seen coming in. This water is tested anywhere from four to five times a day to verify that it is meets a certain standard that we set forth, not set by EPA or the state anyway. It's what we want because we believe the cleaner, cleaner the water, the better the bacteria will remove any um, other particles that we want to remove, the ammonia particles or some heavy metal. So we try to keep the water as clean as we possibly can so the process will work actually better. Similar to humans and the idea of they need to eat instead of eating a hamburger or, or something like that, food like we, well, we know, they eat ammonia and heavy metals. They also need oxygen, hence the word, uh, hence the bubbles bubbling up. That's the oxygen, that's what helps them to breathe and, and control their life. And also as these RBCs spin, they're going underneath, they're grabbing something to eat, and as they come up, they're taking another breath of air to go back down and do the same thing again. They spin very slowly, it's one revolution per minute. Then the next process of this, that the bacteria need to do, they need to have climate control. Just like humans, humans need to have their body temperatures regulated fairly close to 98.6. Well, the bacteria are not quite that bad, but they don't want to be below 50 degrees. If they go, go below 50 degrees, they become dormant, don't work. They refuse to do anything. And if you let them get cold enough, they will eventually die off and, and start to slough off and they'll disappear. And we'll start having high ammonia readings and our mineral and metal rates will start climbing. But at the rate they're going now, after we're done through the process here of going through the chain, and each chain eats a little bit of more of the ammonia or whatever the, the heavy metals or, or minerals in it that, that they want to eat, they'll continue to eat it all the way through the final process. Final stages of the treatment in here, these are the polishing filters. We call them the Baker filters. 
The water runs through here, comes in through the blue line, the light blue, and discharges off the dark blue that you see down below us and goes out to a waterfall. These filters are very similar to the Yardney filters. They have the same media in them, they're a multimedia. Um, we will get into later on what different media looks like and I can show you that because I have samples of it. But it, it's uh, the final process is here. The water quality coming into this part of the plant is about a two turbidity. Turbidity meaning that the quality of water, the clarity of it, which you have at home, and regardless if you live on a farm or in a city, your drinking water usually has a quality of at least a one turbidity or less. This water here, leaving here, is about a 0.3. So we're well within the standards of drinking water quality as far as clarity. We do have a lot of minerals and some, some metals in it that we cannot take out. So that's the reason why I wouldn't want to drink it. You could drink it, I believe, if, if you think you had to drink it, it was the only water available. Other than you'd feel really heavy in the stomach. This is the final process of the plant. This is the discharge point. This would be what we classify as the ethanol water, and we call this hill Pluma Plunge. It actually drops down from here, goes down to Gold Run Creek, which eventually dumps into Whitewood Creek, and eventually Whitewood Creek will dump into the Gulf of Mexico. This water here is as clean as you're gonna get from our process. From the time it gets to this point, from the time we first started up the pump, on the deep well to the point time it gets here is between 24 and 28 to get to this point. Actual process through the plant itself is roughly about six hours and from the time it hits the reservoir until the time it hits here is roughly about 18 to 20 hours. So the process is not a short process, it's kind of a lengthy process, but this is our end result. This is the water that actually is helping the the fish and the wildlife downstream. This is safe for them, safe for animals to drink, and even in some places further downriver, it's, people are using it for their drinking water. It is that clean as it, as it leaves the plant, and we strive to keep it that way because we take a lot of pride in, in the water and the process we do. We, we want to have everybody happy and content with the water quality that we discharge. Thanks for joining me on the tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was very informational for you.